Hi, everybody. This is Starting Out Bright, and I am Noreen Savage. This is episode number 51. I cannot believe it. We're starting a second year of doing Starting Out Bright. And I always like to start by telling you how this got started because uh, it's, it's not on me. Um, for one, I am nobody official with Brightline Eating. I began the program in July of 2019 after my friend Lori had posted on Facebook and she simply said she had lost 57 pounds and if you were interested in finding out how to private message her. And so I did. And when she proceeded to tell me, my heart sunk. There is a book, Brightline Eating by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson. And in the book, Dr. Thompson discusses four bright lines that you don't cross. So they are no sugar, no flour, three meals a day, and weighted and measured portions. And I thought there was absolutely no way I could do that. No way. Even though I had tried everything in my life. And, you know, what really got me to accept that I could maybe try is the pain in my life. I was really suffering from foot pain, knee pain, swelling, back pain, many times going to bed and really wondering if I would wake up in the morning. And so that pain gave me that willingness. And now I'm grateful for the pain because what I came to find out is that it is absolutely doable. And one thing that my friend Lori told me when I got started was one, to get the book, the Bright Line Eating book, and two, to get into the community. And so for me at that point was We Eat Bright with Lines. There are now many private groups, including Starting Out Bright as a private group. There's the public group, the Bright Line official group. And so you have many options to make community. And what I was seeing was then and now photos that gave me so much hope and just the community of people who wanted to help. So that was my start. And I made a promise to myself that if I lasted one year, I would do what Lori did. I would post on my private Facebook page and I would help anybody I could. Well, just before that year was up, that was now July, 2020, I'm a Christian and I felt God just said, Noreen, you can do more than that. You connect all these people with those who desperately are looking for answers and hope. And so that's how the Zooms were born. One by one, people have stepped up and I have been so humbled by their graciousness to tell the story. And you are in for a treat tonight again, because we have tonight Danielle Gross. Hi, Danielle. And just to tell a little bit how Danielle was, um, all she did was post on a Facebook Live. Susan Pierce Thompson had one of these chats where you could ask questions. I don't even know if she had a guest or not. I think she was just talking about Bright Line Eating. And I'm following her along. And Danielle says something like, I am going to be competing in a pageant. And my platform is going to be awareness. Well, you can tell it better than I, Danielle. I immediately messaged you. I'm like, that is phenomenal that you are going to really tell the world this. And you know, I'll let you, I'll let you start wherever you want, Danielle. But that is how I found out, um, found you. And you were just so immediately gracious in agreeing, though you didn't know me from Adam. And <laughs> so thank you for coming. So Danielle, um, where do you want to start? What brought you to Bright Line Eating? Where were you before then? Yeah, well, I'll just finish a little bit about what you said so people kind of understand a little bit about my platform and why I was doing what I was doing. I, I was... Um, Mrs. Yamhill County out here in Oregon and was competing for the title of Mrs. Oregon. And while I was not a pageant girl, I had something that I was very passionate about. And I knew that pageants had a way of spreading awareness through their platforms. And because of my lifelong struggle with food addiction, I thought 
why not give it a go and do it? And when you reached out to me, that was the exact hope that I wanted from having this pageant because food addiction is, um, can be portrayed as a shameful, you know, we're grieving, we're hiding, we're insecure about it. We don't want to share that publicly, publicly. So it's not a topic that we can just express to the whole world. Like, Hey, you must be addicted to food. So let me come and reach out to you and pull you in. That's not how this world is. It's a very intentional, can be a one-on-one. I feel you. I share this with you. I hope that I can be a sense of hope for you. Um, And so I just, I didn't know how I was going to get that platform out to other people without invading their own personal space. Maybe they aren't ready to hear my story. Maybe they aren't ready for help or to come to that realization that food addiction is something that they struggled with. Um, And so I just put that out there as that is what I'm here to bring education to. And if anybody wants to hear about it, reach out to me, which is exactly what you did. And that is why I answered right away. I was like, yes, I will share my story. I will do anything I can to reach and help other people. So I'm very thankful that you sent me a message and I hope that you continue to send messages to anybody you can because it needs to be shared. Well, thank you because I also, as I said, I'm a Christian and there are times when I'm like, Lord, I am a needy child. Would you please send an affirmation to me? That was one of those days yeah. when I'm just, I'm, I'm not looking for anybody and just like, boom. But then the answer comes like, yes, I'll do it. You know, I don't know you, but I'll do it. I'm trusting that you didn't even know even anything about the episodes or anything done before. So again, thank you. So now you're, um, you have a very unique story, and I'm not going to try to tell it for you. But this Bright Line Eating was obviously not your first time with any kind of food program. So what, you know, why don't you, if you could, if you don't mind, you know, you can go as far back as you want, um, or as little, and just bring us up to speed. Like, what was it that took you, you know, to Bright Line Eating? Sure. So, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I felt myself as obese, overweight, super unhappy with who I was and how I looked. And, um, the furthest back date that I, is vividly in my mind that I tried to fix that problem was back in 2005. I did a road trip down to Florida cause I got, um, a job as a chef down there for Disney world. And I went with one other girlfriend who also struggled with her weight. And we told ourselves, you know, we're here for maybe three months. Let's go back home and shock all of our friends and family with new bodies. We're going to lose this weight. We're going to hold this self accountable. Um, But unfortunately we found ourselves doing that in the wrong way. We got, um, well, I especially got extremely addicted to diet pills Mm. and did a lot of exercising with my body wrapped in saran wrap because I heard that that's going to make me sweat and make it come off even faster. You know, I was doing this, what I thought was the super fast, but also ended up being the most unhealthy way for me. I got to the point where I, if I didn't have my diet pills, you know, you could feel my heart pounding. But the second I took those diet pills, it pounded even more. (laughs) And I just, I couldn't stop. And these were over the counter? Over the counter, uh, GNC, you know, it it was, it was really scary. It's really really scary, especially when you're thinking, you know, I don't know, were you in your 20s or? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm I'm just thinking about... Yeah, I'm just thinking about young people out of high school, first years of college or something. And that's just readily available. Yeah. So the only thing I could get off of those was to put myself onto Red Bulls because my body needed that caffeine. So I couldn't just stop the pills. So I went to Red Bulls thinking, I'm just going to going to wean off these caffeine pills and drink it instead. And then maybe I'll turn to coffee or something. But Um, Red Bull actually obviously put the weight back on and I just kept 
going up and up and up on the scale. So it wasn't until after I had my first child, which was then in 2011, that I found a program that did work for me in that time. I lost weight using meal replacements and a coach, and I felt really good about myself. I hit my goal weight. I was keeping it off. I was helping other people as a coach. Um, but four or five years later, I was still on those meal replacements. I couldn't, mm-hmm. I felt like I couldn't succeed without them. So I couldn't go to a restaurant and eat food with my friends. I couldn't go to Thanksgiving or Christmas and feel like I could have a meal with my family. I would mm-hmm. be sitting there having my teeny tiny little meal replacement, but mm-hmm. I looked good. I was, I was at my goal weight. And at that moment, that was all that mattered. Mm -hmm. But in those meal replacements, as we know, they are full of flour and sugar. So my brain still wanted sweets. It still wanted to eat something else. I could never feel fully satisfied in my in, inside, like my, my stomach was always wanting something else. My mind was always thinking of something else. So there was just no, no So fixing. this is, this is going on. Your stomach's really not full. You're looking good. Yeah. But the whole package was not really together. You're Correct. not even able. It's so funny you mentioned that. I really didn't think about this until the other day, how like sometimes having to say no to things. Well, a lot of times because those thoughts come and I thought, well, it wasn't easy the other way either. Constantly dieting. And you talk about meal replacements right away. It made me think of Weight Watchers when I was on it. One of the three times I think I was on it. And, you know, if you recall, if you've been to Weight Watchers, And I'm not knocking the organization because many, many people have found success there. I have absolutely like no, I'm not trashing them at all. The thing was for me personally, though, I ate good food, too much of it. But I was like doing these sweet treats. It's kind of like what you're talking about. There's stuff in them that was still camouflaged of the real thing. I'm specifically thinking ice cream bars, but they were only so many points. And so I would just go through the aisle and try to find those so that I could be, but I was still hungry. (laughs) Yeah. And I I think that's important. What you said is I'm not bashing the programs I've done. I'm not bashing any other program that's out there. But what I found within myself is that, you know, if, if anyone here has taken their um, quiz for the susceptibility scale. If you're a 10 on the susceptibility scale or an eight or a nine, those meal replacements aren't going to help balance out your brain. And that is what really helped me with bright lines is that it wasn't the food or it wasn't the program or the way that the programs worked. It was my brain did not work with those programs. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've lost weight. I did weight watchers, you know, on and off here and there. Um, and my other meal replacement items. And I tried, you know, the Adkins diet and all the things, all the things. (laughs) I'm checking them off as you go. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, but all of that was yes, working for my body, but good golly, I still wanted a cookie at the end of the day. I could not stop thinking about all those things. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into, well, if I, have one day where I eat whatever it is I want. It's fine because I have this program that if I'm good for five or six days, all that weight's going to come back off. So this is, you know, me every single day for five years of, I need, I'm going to keep this body, but on this day, I'm going to be real bad. And then these other days I'm going to be real good. And then I'm going to be bad. And then I'm real good. So every day was a fight when it came to my food. Oh, wow. Yes. I, I'm just tracking right there with you because I had my cheat days on other programs. But what they say is cheat is totally different than what I said was cheat day. You know, and I, I'm like, make it count, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my coffee will have my cream and sugar, but then I'll have a muffin. But then maybe I'll go to Dutch Brothers and get another muffin or you know, my kids are going to need a muffin, so I better get them one, but I know they're only going to eat half of it. 
So mm-hmm. basically I get one and a half muffins. Like there was just always, yeah. it was never ending throughout the day. Right. Never ending throughout the day. Absolutely. So now you, um, you've gone through this and I'm assuming we didn't, we talked the other day, but we didn't talk about this. I'm assuming when you say you were heaviest with your first child, that through the pregnancy, you weren't so much the meal replacement or were you? No, I didn't find, well, my meal replacements, I did have for my third child, Mm -hmm. my first and second, I, you know, was low carb, that kind of thing. But it was after my first two are only 12 months apart. So yeah, I was very busy a couple of years. And after that is when I found my meal replacement program and became a coach, did that for about five years. And then, um, I just kind of, like I said, it wasn't, it was working, but not in the way I needed it to work. Right. And then I had my third and at that point gained most of my weight back, if not all of it that I had lost during my coaching days and was again at a weight where I was not happy, not wanting to be in photos with my children, not wanting to be intimate with my husband. I was very No, (laughs) I didn't want my body to be seen or touched by anybody. You just were not feeling good about yourself in any, in any of the ways. And I think that a lot of us can relate to that. So you found bright line eating somehow. So I, I just got to a point where I was, you know, something isn't right. And so I just got on Google and I was like food addiction. Hmm. Maybe, maybe this is a thing in my head. I'm like, it's not a thing because, you know, drugs are an addictive substance and alcohol is addictive and even sex and gambling. Like those are things that people Mm -hmm. need to go get help because they're addicted to. Surely food can't be one of them. But as we know, it is something that you can be addicted to. And so I had found a podcast with a doctor was, um, I cannot remember his name, but I should really try to find that one because that is what saved me. But Susan Pierce Thompson was a guest speaker on his and everything she was saying, I was just praise the Lord. This woman knows what is happening inside my brain and she is talking about it. And so then I Googled her, found her podcast, which led me to Brightline Eating. And the thing I loved most about Brightline Eating is the first things I learned was all about my brain. It wasn't, you should eat this much protein at this time of day, maybe have these vitamins and meal replacements. It was, this is what is happening in your brain. Yeah. It's the why. Yeah. It's like the why. why. Tell me the why right off the bat. And that's what she did. Yeah. Yeah. So I um, found the 14 day challenge. It was what? $20 $20 or something. And after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on meal replacements, I was like 20 bucks. What have I got to lose? And those 14 days changed the rest of my life. Wow. That was all I needed to be successful was the 14 day challenge and her book. Her book is on my audio app and I listen to it in the car many times throughout the year, over and over again. My kids know a lot of it. They actually keep me on track probably the most because if I try to sneak something, they're like, mom, that has sugar in it. <laughs> so, okay. Do they understand this concept then of food addiction? Oh, 100%. I'm very vocal to anyone I'm around, anyone that I live with, anyone I meet, because I know that it's not, it's not a gimmick or something I'm trying to sell. This is how my brain works. And if I want it to continue to work that way, you need to know that I am an addict. I treat it just as a drug. If I were addicted to cocaine and I walked into a cocaine dealer's house, I'd be like, excuse me, I'm an addict. Don't give that to me. (laughs) And that I have to, I have to treat it that way. Otherwise I will 100% go down the rabbit hole and go back to my old ways. And I know how miserable that is for myself. So I just do anything I can to prevent so it. You have no problem self-disclosing. And now I think about this and I think if someone came into my home, my husband in my home, and they said that, I would totally be, you know, compensating, you know, in some way 
to be able to help, not hurt. I mean, it's a friend coming in. I'm not going to have stuff that's in their face. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, just as we've had people who didn't want alcohol around them. It's, right. It's not going to be in their face. And yeah. so, yeah, so you are, you're being right up front about it. You're being honest with yourself and with those closest to you. And you're willing to talk the talk about it. So there was something about the science then that really spoke to you. Yeah, well, the big thing that spoke to me was the uh, leptin that our brain naturally produces. So for those that don't know, we all have a chemical in our brain called leptin. And no matter what we're doing, where we're at in our life, every morning we wake up, big old lovely fresh dose of leptin running through our brain. But the second we put something sugary, full of insulin into our body, a wall goes up and then, and the leptin is no longer there. And leptin is the chemical that tells us we're not hungry. We don't need that. You're full. Don't reach for those bag of chips. It's basically what in my brain was me wandering around the kitchen what am I going to eat next? What am I going to eat next? What do I need? What do I need? Even though my stomach is so full, there's probably nothing left in there to put anything. Um, but because I had so much insulin pumping through my blood, leptin was not working the way it should be working. Mm -hmm. And th I think it's like three, four days after I stopped eating flour and sugar, yeah. my leptin was working perfectly. Right. And there were definitely times where I forgot to eat lunch. I never forget to eat breakfast because it's my favorite meal of the day. And I look forward to it every morning, but the leptin's working. My body's functioning. I'm real busy. And I'm like, Oh shoot, I need to eat lunch. Cause I, I just don't have those hungers and that thought process anymore of when's my next meal. What am I going to eat? Where am I going to be? Where am I going? It's just, focused on all the other hundreds of things going on in my life. So we have something in common. And, I, and I'm just, this is really triggered, making me think of something when you said that as far as the leptin blocking. So we both married high school sweethearts and they both stayed at their weight. Okay. And I'm, my husband's like a one on the susceptibility scale versus me at a 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just two weeks ago, he did it again. We were at a dinner, we're eating, and he leaves food on his plate. How? Yeah. <laughs> how? <laughs> like, well, how do you leave a you know, how do you leave a piece of garlic toast on your plate? But this right. happens because he says he's full. What? Yeah. What? You what know, but this is this is the thing you're talking about, leptin, where it's like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I didn't have that either. I but now I am starting to feel filled sometimes. After right. not totally full like sick to my stomach or something, but filled. And so, you know, you were honest with me the other day that it's not always a perfect straight line journey and there are times that you have gone off plan. What is your experience at those times? You're saying it takes 3 days to get back on track for your leptin, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when you go off? You know, how difficult is that? Yeah, so I think um, I am a big emotional eater. And that's not one emotion. That's happy, sad, depressed, hurt. Like there's, there's always an emotion that can lead us to food. Mm -hmm. And I can really fall off the bandwagon with any emotion as long as it is strong enough. And I, I let go. And a lot of times it's my own brain thinking I'm doing really good. I've got this. I'm really proud with where I'm at. Surely I can have a little bit of something. Mm. Yeah. And that is never a true statement. It has been three years now with bright lines almost three years and it doesn't matter how many times i tell myself that there's never going to be a little bit um it's always going to turn into a little bit of this and a little bit of that and then a lot of this and even more of that 
Um, so I really, I, I tell myself, it's okay. You can fix this. You've done this before. You resume. I try so hard to not beat myself up, get mad at myself, because all that's going to do is make me even more upset and be like, you failed. Just keep going. It doesn't matter. But I just give myself grace. I'm human. Things happen. I can fix it. I know how. I have the tools. I know what's wrong. It's in my brain. So here I go. It's time to fix it. That's so, so great. And, and I don't think I mentioned this to you um, the other day, but when my friend Lori introduced me and she said, Noreen, if you're going to do this though, just promise me that if you should fall, two things. One, don't beat yourself up, just as you're saying. And two, don't look back. You're not going that way. And I always say, stop, drop, and do the next right thing. Next right thing. Not tomorrow, not next Friday, not next Monday. The next right thing. And that sounds like your strategy too. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, and I, I do look back. I look back enough to where I know I don't want to be in that place again. Mm. I know the evil that's there. I know how unhappy I was. And I know how much I love my life over here. And that's where I'm going to continue to head. So I resume. My first day is usually perfect. I'm good. I've got my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner. My lines are bright. I'm cruising through. Day two, day three can be really hard. But if I have my right tools, I've prepped for success. Once I hit that day four, my leptin is balanced. The insulin is enough out of my body where I can just continue on and my brain is right back where it needs to be. And that, that is my truth to myself that this program works. It's not because I've got some type of pill or meal replacement going through my body that's telling me I'm good. It's that my brain has been rebalanced and the food I'm eating is enough. And you're trusting that. You're, you're trusting that you understand it well enough. So you're uh -huh. almost walking your brain through that process. Like, I know this has to happen because I'm whatever, detoxing whatever that small amount was. I mean, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. But you're really, you're saying these things to yourself as you go through, like you know the process and you know actually what's happening in your body. I think that's just like confidence. Yeah, well, and, and you know, a lot of you know, those who have heard it or not heard it, uh, Susan Pierce Thompson talks a lot about the saboteur. The saboteur inside of us is always going to be there. And I swear my saboteur has like a band of 20 members mm. that are always sitting here talking to me. They're having their own conversations inside my head. And I just have to tell myself that this is my head, my brain, my body. I can do this those little band players are going to be there every day, all day. But if I just stick to my bright lines and know and treat it as this big addiction, right? It's not, it's not a diet, you guys. It's not, a, I didn't seek out a weight loss diet. I looked for an answer to what's happening inside my body chemically. Why isn't it balanced? Because so you that's, knew. that's just what I have to tell myself is I'm, if I listen to the saboteurs, my body is not going to be functioning the way it can be for success. And you mentioned that during this process of the first, second, third, fourth days, if you get your tools together, what are those tools? How do you prep for a resume? So my husband um, lately has been traveling a lot for work. So feeding my kids can be an easy thing. You know, I can get them their bean and cheese burritos, something simple and really focus on this is what I'm going to eat for these three days. I can make a batch of cauliflower rice. I can make spaghetti squash almost and even have fun with my food. Get excited about these meals that I'm about to have because it's what's going to nourish me and get me through. Mm -hmm. And so when I can focus on 
me, which at times feels really selfish because I am a mom of three. I run a small hobby farm. I'm working with my kids school. I do have my husband whom I love dearly, but I know for those three or four days, I have to focus on me in order to be successful and take care of all of those loved ones around me. So I just dial in on my food, spend some time food prepping for at least those three or four days, maybe sometime in the whole week and just have it ready to go, ready to grab. Don't even have to think about what I'm going to eat and just get through as easy peasy as I can. And cooking and all that is not, you're not a stranger to it. You told me that you're a culinary chef. So that was pastry chef, right? And so I'm thinking that's when you were in, in uh, Florida or uh, Disney World or Disneyland. I don't know which one. Yeah. So I, I was a culinary chef in Disney World out in Florida, um, but came back home to Portland for a job as an executive pastry chef and then um, took over a pastry department at a grocery store. And that was my life was sugar all around me. It needed to be sampled, tasted. I mean, can you guys guess that that's when I was at my heaviest Yeah, <laughs> and yes. my husband had no desire to have that in the home. He was like, you can yeah. put that on the counter. I won't even touch it. And I was like, so wow. has that, have you transitioned to making bright line compliant type food? That is um, maybe some of the muffins and things like that. Yeah, I guess it no. I feel like maybe on a weekend I would do one of the waffles and, you know, put a bunch of peanut butter on it for my protein. But I also feel like if I'm making something to give me the feel of something sweet and special, then it's never going to be enough. And I'm always going to wonder, okay, what, how else can I make this to make it even more desirable? And that's exactly what I need to get away from, right? Is my relationship with food needs to be that it's here to nourish my body. It's not here to be a treat and to bring happiness into my life. I just need to eat it and carry on with the happy things around me. Just like the holidays, you know, you're, you're faced with family coming together, potluck style, which means there's, you know, a table of food this way, this big, and a table of desserts like this big. Everyone bakes cookies and chocolates and cakes and pies. And I, that's when I just tell myself, I am here with my family to spend time and enjoy my family. I'm not here to go stand by that table and stuff my mouth full of food or sneak something into my pocket and run off to the bathroom and eat it in there so no one's judging how many cookies I'm taking off the table. That has <laughs> never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and that's, and you know, that's another thing that triggered me was clearly I have an issue with food. If I'm finding myself thinking of when can I get my next fix? You know, if my husband's going to go take a shower at night, I'm like, I got one more chance to get into the kitchen to go to the fridge while he's not looking, but I got to be fast and make sure I'm listening for yeah. the water running. You know, that's not a, a normal relationship with food. Or if I have cash in my wallet, forget it. I'm going to the a drive through. I'm going to go to a grocery store and get a candy bar because there's no receipt of it on the credit card bill. He's never going to see it. So it's, again, it's like, I'm, I'm hiding that relationship with food and that is how I know that this is not okay. This is not, I am not a one on the susceptibility skill. If that's what is going through my mind when I end up with a $5 bill in my wallet. Wow. And you know what? I'm really hearing the honesty with yourself. So important to really be truthful with yourself first and foremost here you're a pastry chef and you're saying, you know what, that is going to lead me down a road that is not going to work out well. That's what I love about this. We all have, we all have the amounts that we can eat for to stay uh, stable with the program. But those things can change from person to person. What works with one person is what makes their program work. And somebody else could come around and say, oh, no, this is a staple item in mine. I can have, you know, I can have this every day. And, you know, it would be a trigger for another person. And even saying cash in my pocket is a trigger. 
that I don't trust myself. So I'm not going to walk out the door with it because I want to be, you know, honest with myself, but also with my husband, because how's that going to go? How's that going to feel, you know, for, you know, even intimacy when you're really lying, you know, that you're hiding it. So there were a couple of things that I wanted to also ask you. I can't believe how this time just starts ticking away, but I know that you got involved not so much with exercise, but that you're a very athletic person. Can you talk about the difference to that? Because there was a slide that we had with all the medals. What is that about? Yeah. So I am not... Um, an active person in the sense of devoting time to exercising. It's probably one of my least favorite things to do. We at home have a full gym with a bike, treadmill, all the weights, the bars, just anything. I could start charging admission for people to come work out of my gym. <laughs> but you'll maybe find me up here four times a year. At most, um, just because, again, with my triggers, I know that if I go and intentionally exercise, I will finish my exercise routine and say, cool, now I'm going to go reward myself because I just worked real hard. I can have, even if it's something little, like I can have an extra string cheese that's great protein after exercising and then I'll eat it and then two minutes later I'll be like, meh. I exercise real hard so I can go have a second one. Like it's just, Mm -hmm. it's a never ending thing where I know if I add intentional exercise into my life, I will always give myself an excuse to treat myself or reward myself after. And me, and that, again, that's just me. I'm not speaking for anyone else. I would never tell anybody to not exercise because it of course is a hundred percent good for you and will benefit you. But I also know that nutrition is where I failed. And that is what was making me lose weight. It wasn't my activity because like you said, I am an active person. I work on a small hobby farm. I've got pigs and goats and chickens. I've got three boys. I've got hay bales to move and a Mm -hmm. field to mow. And I'm always doing something. And one thing that I love, well, I hate it and I love it is running races. <clears throat> Start line, I never want to be there. I never want to be <laughs> ready to go getting, you know, thinking I've got three miles till the finish or six miles till the finish or, um, you know, 10, 13, however far I'm going. But when I cross the finish line, it is the best feeling in the world. And that is what keeps me going back and doing it again. And I've also, again, learning your triggers and knowing what is going to be successful for you is I only sign up for races that give me a medal. I need that reward because if they don't give you a medal, they will always give you a granola bar or a beer or some other type of food item because they're like, you just worked hard. Here's some food to reward yourself. Nope. I need my medal. I need to hold my medal in my hands and walk to my car. Mm. Bypass all the food. Sometimes I grab it so I can give it to my kids or my husband. But if I grab it, it goes in the back of my car. Because if it's right on the seat next to me while I'm driving, I'm totally going to eat it. It's sitting right there. I got my 20 Mm -hmm. uh, guys sitting on my shoulders. (laughs) And they're going to tell me to reach over and grab that food. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, you know, again, you're honest with yourself. There was a question that came up. Are you in maintenance? And if so, have you added anything? So I have not gone to maintenance because I feel satisfied with the weight loss amount of food. And I worry again with my triggers if I add something else in, because I also feel like in the maintenance plan, all the things I'm going to add in are all some of my favorite things. And so I'm just like, if I'm satisfied, if I'm steady, you know, I'm not dropping weight till I'm so skinny. Everyone's like, Oh my gosh, you need to eat food. Cause if any of you have done it, you eat so much food. I'm not concerned about my portion sizes. Um, but if you feel like you are exerting more energy or you are still getting a little hungry, then yes, go on maintenance and enjoy it. 
But for me, I just, I'm really happy with where I'm at. I'm happy with the food portions. I honestly can't even imagine adding more food into them because they are very generous portions. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I love the program that I'm currently on. So I want to ask you one more thing too, that we talked about the other day, and that's about skin. Because yeah. yours is really honest about that too. <laughs> Guys, I'm an open book. I'll tell you anything. So please feel free to ask questions. So during my weight loss, so from my Heaviest to where I am now, I'm about 100 pounds difference, like 97 pounds. And with that amount of weight loss and three 8 to 10 pound babies, <laughs> I had very stretched out skin. And when I got down to my goal weight and I knew my body was physically fit, but I looked in the mirror and did not see a physically fit person because of the loose skin. I had a real serious, you know, heart to heart with myself, heart to heart with my husband. And we decided that a tummy tuck was right for me. And when I went and had a tummy tuck done, I had 1.5 pounds of skin removed from my body. I didn't have 20 pounds of fat cut out and removed. I had a pound of skin. That was it. And the only reason I did that was for my own self-conscious. It wasn't so I could strut around in a cutoff t-shirt and show my stomach. It was so my husband could reach his hand over and touch my stomach while we were watching a show. And I don't cringe in disgust because I'm like, oh, he's feeling this like big bowl of jello on my stomach. And all I wanted him to feel was my my hard work that I have done, you know, it, it was smooth and it was hard and I had a really good fit body, but I just could not get over that feeling of, well, and was, was the, of- was the specific surgery? Is that difficult? I mean, I, was, I don't, I don't know how it works. Yeah. It, it's a very hard recovery again, because I had three kids, my muscles were also stretched out and there was a big gap in them. So the doctor felt it necessary to sew the muscles together. And that was a lot of the pain, but it was, you know, a couple weeks of my husband having to lay me down and pick me up, oh. um, had to help me shower, which was not something I had ever really done with him, nor was I comfortable with, because again, I'd always had this negative self-image and didn't want him to see what I saw, even though he loved me unconditionally, no matter what I looked like, it was more of what I felt and how I envisioned myself to him. Um, And so, but, you know, two months later, I was finally able to stand upright and the swelling was beginning to go down. It took a good five or six months for swelling to go down. Really? Wow. Um, Yeah. And so I really... You know, I don't, I'm not a big um, spokesperson for plastic surgery because I also feel like it's, it's important that we love who we are and love our bodies as women, especially our bodies do amazing things. And we should be so proud of that. But I'm also an advocate for if you are struggling with something and you think this will help, then go for it and try it and see if that helps. It 100% helped me and my confidence. And if anyone has um, more questions about that, whether it's on here or privately, like please reach out and I'm happy to talk about it. Um, But I'm, I don't, I have zero regrets. I'm very happy with the outcome. And again, it is for, me and being able to put my jeans on without tucking my skin in underneath it and being able to enjoy my time with my husband without having thoughts. Cause you don't, so it you don't negative led, thought. I mean, it, it leads to, it sounds like for you personally, it led to more self-confidence that you needed in that yeah. area and maybe even better in, intimacy just because the brain is the biggest thing that we have. And so yeah. if we're blocking, you know, and, and for many, they wear it as a badge of honor. And that's perfectly great, too. And that's yeah. what I, I wanted to, when you said that to me the other day, 
and I asked if you'd talk about it, it's because we can do that. We can do your choice, someone else's choice. It's like we're all valid in what we want to do and how we feel. So that's, you know, validating your feelings by taking the next step and, you know, looking for what are the options for extra skin. You found out, and that's kind of interesting that you said you're not really removing the fat Mm -hmm. because with the nutrition you were getting, I'm thinking that it's like they say the the fat is like replaced with water or how does that work? I don't know. Yeah, there there wasn't fat to remove because it, it was just, I mean, I could have, if, you know, if this was my abs, I could have just pulled my yeah. skin straight out from it. And mm-hmm. there, you know, it was very thin because there was nothing, there was no tissue, no, yeah. no nothing in between it. Mm. Well, that is really great to hear. Now, what would you say overall has been your best non-scale victory in going through this program and, you know, it, you're sounding like you've had the confidence now that you didn't really have before you had gotten down in weight before, but now what is the difference? What, what are your non-scale victories? I think knowing or admitting that I know what the problem is, you know, before, like I said, I lost the weight because I was giving, I was given tools to do so. But now I'm losing weight because my brain is balanced and in its right place. I'm still using tools to feed it properly, but I'm using real food and my own, you know, I can go grocery shopping and buy what I want. I don't have to buy one of 10 items to feed myself all day, every day. And I know how to go to a restaurant with my friends and family and eat with them and go um, to a holiday and still sit down and enjoy a plate of food. Uh, But I also, this is might sound silly, but there's something freeing about walking into your closet and putting something on and walking out the door and not putting something on, looking in the mirror, thinking, oh, nope, that hugs me wrong. Putting something on, oh, nope, my arms look fat in this. Putting something on, oh, I can't, like I can kind of get them on, but I'm pretty sure by the end of the day, if I sit down, something's going to roll over the top of it. You know, there's just, it's so freeing to be able to throw something on and run, especially as a busy mom, cutting out that time of my day has been a big non-scale victory for me. That's awesome. You know, every first, first of the year, that would be on my resolution list. Yeah. That everything would be in the closet, everything in my closet, I would like, and it would fit. Yeah. I don't have that right now at all. And that is a goal still, because I just feel like you, you're explaining it perfectly. That's what I, that's all the simplicity I want is to be able to go in and know it fits and that I'm okay to walk out the door with it. Cause otherwise, why is it in there? (laughs) It's just torture. With COVID happening, right. We're doing so much online shopping. Right. And how many, you know, how many different sizes do we need to order to make sure that they fit? And then we deal with the returns for all the different ones that don't fit. You know, I just, I know my size, I can order it, it comes, I'm good to go. Well, and even like the pageant, you know, you have a beautiful dress. You have you got to buy that more than a couple weeks in advance. I, I'm thinking of how many diets I've been on. And it's like the goal is to lose 25 pounds by that wedding or 30 pounds by such and such a date. Never happened. So amazing to even think about, like, I'm going to buy a dress right now today that I know it's going to fit me in six months. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's that's really an amazing thought. Yeah. And, you know, I still, for, you know, a little bit more on that pageant, the pageant was just this last weekend. And unfortunately, I did not win the crown um, that I was hoping for. I did win Miss Congeniality. And I took that with pride because that was voted on the people that were really around me throughout the whole pageant process. They knew who I was. They knew my heart. It wasn't a judge that sat in front of me while I walked across the stage in a bathing suit and a dress 
and decided who was going to win. And it took so much for me to put a bathing suit on and walk up on a stage because even though I had a tummy tuck, you know, I still got my stretch marks and loose skin on my legs, but I was telling the girls, I was like, you know what? I worked really hard to have that loose skin on my legs and I would much rather have loose skin than thighs that I had to put baby powder on because they were going to chafe as I was walking to the grocery Wait. store. You know, I, I, I worked real hard for that. And so I went up there with a smile on my face. I was so proud of who I was. I had a hard time with the loss because I felt, you know, I wanted to win for being me. And I really wanted them to know that I'm just a, an authentic down to earth kind of girl. But again, like I said, the, the congeniality ward is where it's at. Cause that, that is who I am. And that was my heart. And I was very proud of myself. As you were saying that I was getting choked up because I think that you are a winner. I think about where you were, like you're saying like a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about this, Danielle. Yeah. Think about where you were. And not only did you just find something, you sought it out. You did the Googling. You, were, you knew that your eating was not normal, that this is not how normal people behave around food. You know, my husband doesn't have that problem. Why is it me? So you were not complacent. And you had even had all this health coaching that you were doing. You put that all behind you. And then when you found the answer, and this is what really just inspired me so much, is that you were willing now not only to, you know, you could have just sat and like, okay, I'm beautiful. I'm in my right size body. No, that's not enough. You're like, I am going to put myself out there. I'm going to help if I can. I'm going to help somebody else, maybe just one other person, by this awareness that you're not alone. There, this is a thing. And yeah. I hear you and I see you and come to me. I will help you. And so the congeniality, I mean, that's, that's a given, just talking with you. Honestly, believe me, I don't think there's anybody here that who wouldn't say you're the whole package and a winner in every single every single bit of it. So I just had to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. And, and I don't want anyone to think that my life is perfect and I don't have struggles with the addiction, just as an alcoholic, a drug addict, anyone in an addictive mindset will 100% struggle the rest of their life. If there's cookies in my house, it is going to take all of me yeah. to not, nibble on even a crumb and I just am so aware of my triggers and how my body functions that I just do everything I can beforehand to make sure that I'm successful in the end to prepare and the face yep I one thing that I heard that will always stick in my head is it's much easier to say no one time at the store or one time at the restaurant than it is to say no again and again every single day if it's in your home. Mm -hmm. Walking down the aisles at the grocery store is going to be hard. You're going to want to grab all those things at the check stand. You're going to want to sneak one last thing onto your conveyor belt. But if you just say no one time right then and there and walk away, when you get home, you don't have to say no again because it's not there. Yeah. That's really and that, true. that is something I still have to live by every day because I'm going to struggle if it's in my home because I am not perfect. I do not have everything fixed to the point where I can be my husband and leave a chocolate cake on the counter. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I just set myself up for success. Well, as we wrap up, I want to give you an opportunity. Is there somebody here or someone who will listen to this? And thank you for letting me record this, Danielle. Sure. What would you say to them if they were, as you were before starting Bright Line Eating, what would you say to them about getting started? I would say, I mean, if, if someone went up to you and said, you can be in the right size body 
if you cut out flour and sugar and the first thing in your thought was, you mean I could never have, you know, fill in the blank again? I could never have cake on my birthday. I could never have a glass of wine. You know, there's, if those are the thoughts that are going through your head, then I urge you to think of that as your addictive substance. And if you were a mom, a sister, daughter, friend, husband, if there's men listen, if you know, they're listening to, they've struggled with the same things we do ladies. But if you were, or if you are one of those things, and if you were addicted to cocaine, meth, alcohol, something that made you not who you are, would you want to cut that out of your life for your family? And if the answer is yes, then yes, you can cut out flour and sugar so that you can be the best person you can be to all of the people that are around you. And that is all it takes. That's really true. Let that sink in. That's pretty powerful. Well, Danielle, here we are. The time is up already. It went so fast. And I can't thank you enough for answering the call when I sent you a message and you graciously said yes, that you would come and tell your story. And and I know it's there's way more to the story. We could we could ask more questions about the hobby farm. Maybe I will in three yeah. questions <laughs> Thursday. So I want to thank you again. Thank you everybody for being here. Really appreciate it. And I'm going to close as I close each week. Good night. Stay bright and don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Noreen. You're welcome. So, Danielle, how would you like to play Three Question Thursday? Okay. All right. You know, in during this starting out bright episode, you said breakfast is your favorite. What is so favorite about breakfast? I love cheese. Okay. <laughs> if if the program said anything about not eating cheese, I tell you what, I probably would have questioned it a little bit more because okay. I need me some cheese in my life. And when I found Triscuits and Ezekiel bread, I was like, cheese and crackers for breakfast. Yes, please. That's fantastic. So do you like toast the Ezekiel bread and then melt cheese on it? Or how does that work? Yeah, or sometimes I'll do like toast with an egg and then cheese on top for my protein. Sometimes it's just toast and peanut butter with a banana mm -hmm. um, and then some extra cheese on the side. Or during the school year when I'm on the go with my kids, it's a lot of cheese, Triscuits, banana, blueberries, you know, just anything that's easy to cut and go. Yeah, a lot of that is great for vacation too then for those who are traveling. So that's really good. You mentioned hobby farm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know that you have pet goats, pigs, chickens, and you know, they are your pets. Um, how much like strength does it take to maneuver all of this? I mean, because I know that you're not like hardcore into exercising. You do race and triathlon and all that kind of stuff. But is this like heavy duty, like pails of things you have to carry around or what? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't lift any weights, but you know, I've got some, some farmer arms here. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on a farm, so I'm wondering about this. Yeah. You know, we our pigs are our pets. And because there are pets, we, we've got one, especially Jimmy Dean, he gets to come out of his pen every once in a while in Rome, but it, it takes some muscle to get him back inside. So there's a lot of that. And yeah, just feeding the animals is lifting hay bales and throwing it out there or feeding all the feed bins is 50 pound bags, getting those out there and um, just dealing with my, my three little boys who want to play with mom and yeah. Have a good time. We're always doing something. So activity that's fun and you're loving it on the yeah. farm. I noticed you had a really cool shirt too that said motherhood. I just really <laughs> like that too. 
So that, and that's actually um, my own clothing brand. Oh, well, that's going to be question number three then. Please tell me about this yeah. clothing brand. Yeah, oh, that's cause... funny. We didn't talk about that. Yeah, um, it's called Our Hood. Okay. And meaning we live in the Pacific, Pacific Northwest where Mount Hood is. And okay. we love it. It's beautiful. We look at it every day. And my girlfriend and I created Our Hood to just simply create something to celebrate motherhood and family and relationships. So it's got just a simple outline of Mount Hood and underneath it says motherhood. Oh. And we've got a fatherhood. And for the pageant, I um, made a special order one that says sisterhood for all the girls to wear. And um, yeah, we just, we do just simple sweatshirts and t-shirts. The other thing we really wanted it was to be affordable because me as a mom, I go through my t-shirts real fast. They get yeah. stretched out and ruined. So, so we wanted to find something. There are t-shirts and sweatshirts and yeah. Okay. Well, do you have a website? Yep. Ourhood.com. And it's okay. two D's at the end of hood because we are Danielle and Danielle are the business owners. Okay. So Ourhood with two D's.com. You'll find us. Well, didn't plan on that, but no, nope. great. <laughs> and I hope some people will find you. So thank yeah. you for, you know, sharing your story and thank you for playing three question Thursday. Yeah, thank you, Noreen. Thanks so much. And good night, everybody. Stay bright. Thank <laughs> you.